everyone. Thanks for joining us for the webinar today. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I always like to start off webinars by thanking everyone for joining us. I know that this is in the middle of your day, and for most of you, it's a work day, and most certainly for everyone, it's a busy day. So I always appreciate when people are generous with their time and spend some of the time with Tulane SOPA. So we're very excited to um, share our kinesiology program with you today. Um, uh, my name is Sheila Gold. I'm the executive director of admissions at Tulane SOPA, and I'm joined by two of my colleagues, Dr. Lainey Dornier, who you're gonna hear from, who's the program director of the kinesiology program, Program, Dan Rahe, who is um, an academic advisor, and then behind the scenes making the magic of the webinar happen is Ann Conlin. So thank you all for coming. So we always like to share with folks a little bit of information about Tulane School of Professional Advancement. Tulane University itself was founded in 1834 as the Medical College of Louisiana, but relatively shortly thereafter, about 50 years later, Tulane College uh, started its first university for educating working professionals. Today, that is called the School of Professional Advancement. But back then in the 1880s, Tulane knew and recognized that working adults need a place to go back and continue their education and get a Tulane degree. And so we have had our eye on flexible schedules and part-time schedules, but degrees for professionals to change their career trajectory since almost the beginning of the university. The way that looks today is that we offer online programs as well as on-ground programs, and we've been doing that for a long time and consider ourselves having a lot of expertise in that field. Our programs and our faculties are, are trained to work with working adults who need their flexibility, but know that they have many things in their lives to schedule like jobs and families and lots of other um, expectations on their time. And we also offer a tremendous amount of student support to our students. One of the things that we are incredibly proud of at SOPA is that when you join as a student, we consider this a commitment to you our, both the staff and the faculty that we want to see you succeed and get your degree. It's not just that we want students to start degrees. We want to see students finish and be proud of their Tulane degree. And then we also offer support to help you find a job in your chosen field. We also are very much cognizant of the fact that being professionals, being working adults, having other commitments on your time, there are also commitments to um, affordability, that we know that there's other expenses that you're taking in mind, sometimes going to school when you are also working full time means that it's quite the commitment um, on your resources. And so our price point is specifically geared towards folks so that you can make the commitment to going back to school as well as being able to balance the affordability. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the slot as we uh, get further in our presentation. But as you're looking at this, I also encourage folks to go on our website and look at our tuition calculator. It gives you very specific detailed information about how much each credit hour would cost you. And you can play around with that and figure out if you wanna take six credits a semester, how much that might cost you. Also, the thing that we're very proud of is our Tulane degree and the value of that degree and the fact that when you interview for jobs and you say that you went to Tulane, that that is very impressive to many employers. So online learning at SOPA is something that we have been doing for several years now. So there's a lot of talk um, about online learning, especially during these unusual times during COVID, when many schools have had to switch to a virtual environment. We at SOPA have actually had online curriculum for several years. So this is not new to us. This is not something that we're doing as a response to the pandemic, but we have been committed to quality, rigorous online learning for a while now. What that really means is that our classes are designed to be offered to students online. So we work with instructional designers whose entire job is to think about curriculum that would traditionally take place in a classroom and translate that to the online environment. So some of those things that students are worried about in terms of 
group work or losing the connection to classmates or professors or being able to um, make relationships in the classroom. We have thought about ways to translate that to the online environment so students don't lose that when they take classes at SOFA. Uh, you will have access to materials, to lecture notes, to assignments, and our faculty are very trained and very adept at being able to translate that to the students. So you will find that you make friends in the class, that you can do group work in the class, that you might have breakout groups in the class and projects. All of that has been thought through so that you will not lose any of the traditional experience by taking online curriculum. Um, there will be monthly online meetings with classmates, faculty, and guest speakers. So we want to be very clear with students that we've been thoughtful about how to translate that experience. Some statistics that we like to share are the scale at which we have been offering online education to students way before um, we had to um, switch to this format during the pandemic. Over 1,300 students have completed over 10,000 hours of online learning. And I also like to point out that this statistic and that these, um, this data was actually put in this slide before COVID happened. So actually these numbers are even higher. Um, our, the depth at which we do this is um, pretty extensive. We have eight master's degrees, 11 graduate certificates, four post-baccalaureate certificates, and over 300 courses that were all intentionally developed to be taught online. And so once again, all of those courses and degrees are thought out to give you the maximum experience in the online environment. We also have almost 200 faculty, I think actually we, we have 200 faculty at this point, who have been trained to work with students in online instruction. And that training is ongoing. Our faculty are constantly getting trained. Um, we also have award-winning faculty in the online environment. So I certainly hope that this will help you feel better about um, thinking about degrees at Tulane University. All right, I am gonna pass this over to my colleague, Lainey Dornier, who can share all about the kinesiology program. All right, thank you and welcome everybody. I'll remind you, if you're, don't, if you're not muted, make sure you mute yourself so we don't hear the background noise. Um, welcome to this webinar. I am Lainey Dornier, the director of the kinesiology program. And I like for all of our students to realize that the program is called kinesiology, but the degrees within our program have different names. Kinesiology really is the study of human movement. And so whether you're studying human movement from a health and wellness perspective or an exercise science perspective or a sports perspective, the thing we all have in common, all the degrees have in common is that we're studying human movement from some perspective. And so we have a lot of courses that cover things related to sport, things related to wellness and exercise and things related to um, exer uh, exercise physiology. Next slide, please. One of our, so we have two undergraduate degrees. The first is a Bachelor of Arts in Health and Wellness. This degree really is set up for students who are interested in working in the wellness industry. The wellness industry has really blossomed over the last 15 years and jobs in health and wellness have grown over the last 15 years also. And so the jobs include things like fitness coordinator, working in a recreation program, a wellness director, a behavioral health specialist, a certified personal trainer. Also jobs that may be working in the industry like working with um, colleges and universities that have wellness programs or even uh, pro, uh, uh, corporations. Google hires wellness directors. Uh, insurance companies hire wellness directors to work with their clients. This degree, like our, all of our undergraduate degrees, is 120 credits, including 13 hours in the major. And what that means is there's, I mean, not, not 30 hours in the major. And those 30 hours are specific kinesiology courses that are geared toward health and wellness. We also have a Bachelor of Science in Exercise Science. This also is 120 credit hour, and it has 40 hours in the major. So 40 hours of kinesiology courses. The exercise science degree is really geared towards students that wanna work in the clinical aspects of kinesiology, like as a physiologist, a biomechanist, an, uh, 
a med medical health service manager, or also students that might wanna go into allied health fields like physical therapy, occupational therapy, physician's assistants. The, the exercise science degree is really a more science oriented degree. So there are a lot more sciences. You are required to take cell biology, anatomy and physiology, exercise physiology, motor learning, biomechanics, and these types of classes. For both of our undergraduate degrees, health and wellness and exercise science, we offer courses both on ground and online. There are some courses in the exercise science program that are only offered on ground because they have a lab associated with them like the exercise physiology, exercise prescription, and those type courses. For the health and wellness, we try to offer courses both online and on ground. So students that prefer it on ground can wait till it's offered on ground. Students that prefer it online can wait till it's offered online. We also have two master's degree programs. We have a master of professional studies in health and wellness management. This is tied to the undergraduate degree in health and wellness. So this is a graduate degree that's similar to the undergraduate degree in health and wellness in that it provides an educational opportunity for students to expand their knowledge in health and wellness at the graduate level. So the classes are a little bit more advanced. And in our health and wellness management program, we have stackable certificate programs. The certificates are in health leadership, health strategy and financial management and corporate wellness. So students could come just to do the certificate. Each certificate is four classes. So if you just wanted to come and get a certificate in health leadership, you could come and take four graduate level classes and have a certificate in health leadership. But we also offer the master's degree program. For the master's degree, you can complete any two certificates of the three offered plus an additional two core classes for 10 classes and have the master's degree or we've made it a lot more um, flexible for students in this master's degree where you can select eight courses across the three certificate programs plus the two core courses for the master the 10 hour i mean the 10 course master's degree students with a degree in master with a master of professional studies in health and wellness can have careers in health promotion as a wellness director employee health director, a health communications director, or a wellness coach. And these are just some of the careers. There are actually a multitude of careers that are available in the health and wellness management field because the health field is changing so rapidly. So hospitals are looking for people with these type of degrees as they expand their health and wellness programs within a hospital. We also offer the Master of Professional Studies in Sports Studies. Like the, profession, the, the master's degree in health and wellness management, this is a stackable certificate program degree. So you can get a certificate in sport administration, sport coaching, or sports security. You complete any two of the certificate programs plus the required core classes for the master's degree. In this stackable certificate program, you are required to finish the certificates and not take courses across certificate programs. This is really geared for people that are interested in working in the sports field, like as an athletic director, uh, head or assistant coach, a director of sport management, or even somebody that wants to work in event and stadium security. Let me go to the next slide, please. We also offer post baccalaureate certificates and graduate certificates. The graduate certificates I've told you about, but we also offer a post bac certificate in health and wellness. This is a series of six undergraduate courses, and this is for individuals that already have a bachelor's degree. So maybe you have a bachelor's degree in business, but you're really interested in looking at the wellness aspect of business. You wanna start maybe a new business in wellness management. Well, this might be a great post bac degree for you to take. You could come back and take six courses in the health and wellness track for a post bac certificate. We have a variety of faculty. We're very proud of our faculty. Our faculty are working in the industry, which we really think brings a very unique perspective to the way we offer coursework within the School of Professional Advancement. 
So we have people that are professionals in the areas that they're teaching. So for example, Sharvi Greer, who's a senior women administrator, and she teaches courses in our sport administration track in the very thing that she does in her work, which is program development. Uh, Irina Tarashenko is an actually, actually a national champion in pickleball and a previous uh, tennis player uh, at the collegiate level and coach. She's coached both at the collegiate level and individually for our professionals in tennis. And she teaches courses in sport coaching. And then Tyra Mitchell, who's a physical therapist, was a physical therapist and now is a professor of practice in our program. And she teaches courses in motor learning, exercise prescription, and the areas that she's actually an expert in. And then Vernon Dunn, who actually works with the federal government, and he has a background in um, motor development, and he teaches courses for us in motor development. So this is just an example of some of our faculty. We actually have a broad range of faculty with a broad range of expertise who are here to teach you in the areas that they're experts in. I'll turn this back over to Sheila or Dave. All right, thank you so much, Lainey. I appreciate that. So um, I previously spoke about um, our student support and success. Tulane SOPA very much is committed to supporting our students. I mentioned that before. And some of the ways that we do that are through academic advisors like Dan Rahe, who's on with us, um, who are there for our students. They want to help you in terms of managing your classes, picking your classes, being successful in terms of navigating um, things that might come up. Lainey just talked a little bit about our expert faculty. So our faculty are not only here to teach you, but they're also here uh, to talk to you about ways that you can translate your education into the professional field. That's why so many of them have been practitioners themselves. So we are, as a school of professional advancement, we know that our students are returning back to school because you have career goals. And so we try to have mentors all throughout the school that will help you reach your goals. We know that you're not here just because you're filling up your time, but because you specifically want to take your career to the next level. So our advisors and our faculty are here for you. Reach out to them, create relationships with them. That is what they enjoy doing if you ask them. We have a specific career advisor on campus who uh, has programs for students throughout their time that will introduce them to various job opportunities and webinars um, to help you with your resume, to helping um, um, getting um, your LinkedIn profile put together and also job opportunities and job fairs. And then of course, when you come to Tulane University, you are automatically linking yourself with our network of program peers and Tulane alumni. And so our alumni database is here for you um, as, as part of the connection that you can make so that you can reach out to folks who are either friends of SOPA or who are out in the field who might be available to our students to talk to them, to mentor them, to give advice. Dan, do you want to talk a little bit about our Credit for Prior Learning program? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, the Credit for Prior Learning is a way to earn credit towards your bachelor's or master's degree through um, any experiences you gained outside of the classroom, like work experience, community service, uh, military training for example, are just a couple of ways. We have a portfolio assessment that students can do where you, if you know you qualify, you take a portfolio class and it shows you how to put together a portfolio. And then you then submit those portfolios that are, you know, peer re reviewed, you know, by our faculty to determine, you know, any kind of credit that can be awarded for those. And that's, and then you pay a small fee versus, um, you know, um, a regular course fee. And that way, um, you know, you can get some credits knocked out pretty quickly, um, depending on your background and experience and everything, of course. Um, but it is a quick way, a good way to, um, you know, get some credits and get you closer to your goal and completing your, you know, uh, program. At the graduate level, you know, since the degree is only 30 credits, they're all just 10 classes, you can earn up to six credits, which is two classes worth basically through the portfolio assessment. And then at the undergraduate level, there's the degree is 120 credits. So there's a lot more room 
you know, to knock out some of those credits. Um, and you can get up to 24 that way. I've had a lot of, um, you know, students like, and I, I advise IT students, for example, as well. So I have a lot of people who, you know, are IT professionals already in their field. They're just needing to go back and get their bachelor's degree, for example. So a lot of times they're able to do portfolios for some of the rather basic computer courses because why should they sit, you know, in through an entire semester and take a class when they know that stuff, you know, uh, with their eyes closed and um, they go back and they do portfolios um, um, and then pick up a couple quick credits that way so that they can, you know, progress towards their degree um, a lot faster. I'm going to jump in real quick because somebody asked about what's required for the portfolio and that's a great question. What we have a set, a set of objectives for each class. And so what you would have to do is you would work with the person who's in charge of our portfolio plan and your real life experiences have to match the objectives of the course. And so we can show you what, if there's any course, you can look at the course and we can show you what objectives have to be met. And then you have to demonstrate how you met each one of those objectives for the course. And that's, and then provide evidence of that. And that's what the portfolio is made of. Yeah, so Dalila Amrabasic, our uh, director of prior learning, she works with those students to determine, you know, if you have, if you meet that criteria, and then they will suggest some courses that, you know, could potentially, based on what we offer, can then be applied as such. So, um, it's, uh, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought, but, um, it's a pretty straightforward process. Yeah, the requirements I was going to say at the undergraduate level, essentially, you have to have completed English 1010, which is a basic writing course for all our degrees, whether you've completed it with us or in transfer. And you have to be a student in good standing, which is you have to have a 2.0 GPA. So once you've taken, you know, a class with Tulane, you have English 1010, you have at least a 2.0 GPA, then, you know, you can start that process of prior credit for prior learning, you know, I'd set you up with uh, Dalila and then you guys can work together and see, you know, if you're a qualified candidate for it. And then if so, then you just proceed forward with it and, um, you know, start accumulating those credits. Thanks, Dan. Um, one more thing, although that was very comprehensive about the credit for prior learning, I always like to point out that it can be a huge savings to students. So those are credits you only have to pay for the portfolio class. You don't have to pay for those those credits because you will already have been awarded those. So that's a good lead into the affordability slide, um, which is why I pointed out because at SOPA, we are committed to um, making attaining a professional degree as affordable as possible. Um, our tuition rates for undergraduates are $525 per credit hour, and the graduate rate is $1,078 per credit hour. I really like to point out to students because I acknowledge that students are savvy consumers as you should be. Degrees are expensive and you should be doing your homework before you commit to a university. When you're comparing uh, Tulane School of Professional Advancements with other schools, please look at the fees associated with the tuition. We are very deliberate about having a very nominal fee associated each semester with our tuition. Lots of other schools that you look at, once you add on their additional fees, it could almost double the per, per credit hour tuition rate. That is not the case at SOPA, um, and we do that very intentionally. So um, once again, our tuition calculator on um, our website website could be helpful with having you figure that out too. Um, most of our students apply for financial aid. I like to always um, tell students if you're applying to SOPA when you start your application, also start your FAFSA application for financial aid. It can take several weeks to get through the financial aid process and so starting it at the same time as your admissions application is always good practice. The types of aid that our students receive could be federal grants or loans. We are um, very proudly a yellow ribbon school. So um, we have 20% discounts for active military and veterans, as well as city and parish employees, first responders, as well as um, Jefferson and Orleans Parish teachers. And Sheila, there's a couple of questions you might know the answer to. Okay. In the chat. 
One is, is tuition a flat rate or is there an in-state, out-of-state cost difference? Thank you, Lainey. Um, it's a flat rate. We are, as a private institution, we don't do in-state versus out-of-state. So these tuition rates apply to in-state or out-of-state students. And do you know if we offer health insurance for the graduate program? Yes. So you, you do, all students have the option to either opt in to Tulane health insurance, or for some students, they prefer to opt out and keep their current health insurance. So that is handled um, through our student affairs and our health center. But yes, that is an option. And then the last one says, does the post 9-11 GI Bill cover SOPA? Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. So um, we have a specific GI Bill um, person at Tulane, and you would have to contact them specifically. I believe that they are housed in our registrar's office. Um, but as you are going through the financial aid process, um, you can mention that you are using the GI Bill, and they will direct you and give you the contact name and information of our GI Bill um, employee, but yes. And then do you know yeah. how many classes they have to take at the graduate level to qualify for health insurance? Uh, I do not. We'd have to look that up. We'd, ha we'd have to look that up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, next slide. So um, uh, we uh, at SOPA are very committed to, make our, to making our application process as straightforward as possible. Um, if you have not started your application yet, you can at sopa.tulane.edu forward slash apply. It's at the bottom of the screen. That will open you into the application portal. You'll have to put in um, an email address and your name and then start the application. Our application questions are incredibly straightforward. You'll have to fill out um, name, address, that sort of information. We'll need previous information on schools that you've attended. If you are an undergraduate, there is a $40 application fee. If you are a graduate student, there is a $50 application fee. However, for attending this webinar, we will automatically waive that fee. If for some reason it isn't automatically waived, um, all you have to do is email us and we can waive it for you. I see that there's a question that if you've already started your application, email me afterwards. The very last slide on this um, webinar is my email address. Just email me. I can waive it in about four seconds. It's very easy. Just reach out to me. Um, we also will need you to upload an image of a current government ID. So that's either a passport or a current driver's license. Take a picture with your phone and upload that image to the application. And then we'll need transcripts from any previous schools that you have attended. Um, you can see send those either electronically um, by requesting that they be sent electronically to Tulane, or you can ask that they be sent by um, U.S. mail. U.S. mail is a little bit slower during um, these COVID times, so the preferred method is an electronic um, transcript submission, and we get those usually within 24 to 48 hours. And Dan has also provided in the chat room a link to campus health. So those that are interested in looking about the health insurance, thank you very much, Dan. You can go to that link. That's great. Thank you. So um, we are still accepting applications for those of you who are interested in starting this fall. Our classes start on August 19th. We are accepting applications for fall through August 1st, which is this Saturday. So you can, there is time to get it in. Really, there is time. So if you're interested after this webinar, go ahead and submit it. If you are planning ahead to start in January, our application deadline is January 1st. And um, for those of you who are really planning ahead for our summer term, May 15th is our summer deadline for our application. Um, I see a question, I think uh, it just went down about Tulane. If your previous school is Tulane, I think this is what you're asking. Um, if that is true, we will pull your Tulane transcript for you. Put that you have attended Tulane on your application because that lets us know, but we can go in and get that application for you. Real quick, I saw the other question about the military and the DD-214. Um, as at the undergraduate level, um, we can accept right off the bat up to 12 credits from your military experience, depending on your transcript and you know what kind of job you did while you were um, 
um, in the military. Um, we, the credit, if you were in the Air Force, you would send a community college of the Air Force transcript. Those, since that is an actual college. Um, if you were Navy, Marines, or Army, okay, I see you were in the master's program. Um, I would provide, you would usually get a JST, a joint services transcript. That has a lot of your experience on it, but um, as far as getting the credit for the prior learning then, I, I would think uh, you would want to talk to Dalila to see what kind of necessary, um, what she needs in addition to that. The DD214 I know does say everything that you did, you know, over your uh, time that you were um, in the military and whatnot, but um, at the graduate level, um, I don't know, I would, we would want to um, have you reach, uh, speak to Dalila who does the prior learning credits to, um, so that they have everything, you know, to be able to determine if any of this stuff can potentially uh, receive gr graduate credit. Because on the JST transcripts, the Joint Services transcripts, they've already um, evaluated everything, the American Council on Education, and made their credit recommendations. And those credit recommendations will say at the undergraduate level, three credits in military science or something like that. So if you have any, a transcript that has graduate level, you know, credit recommendations, then that would probably be a good thing um, and could potentially, you know, be used somewhere. But um, it would depend on what's on that transcript and then how that can come over to uh, credit at Tulane, and that's something um, Delila would be. And we can work on these on an individual basis too. Yes, yes, they're all done individually. Yeah. yeah. So we, we don't. Well, thank you. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. So that is our uh, webinar. Um, my actually, it, the, it's Lainey's information that's on the slide. So this is Dr. Dornier's information. You can reach out to her with questions. Um, my email is s like sam gold g o l d at tulane.edu um, super simple and if you don't remember it it's on the website if you have any questions for me um, and we love to ask, thank you and just put it in the chat box on the bottom um, and we really love hearing from students so i as the admissions director always tell students on webinars i consider the admissions process relationship building so we get to know our students through this process this is our first introduction to you and your first introduction to us and the way we get to know you is through questions. So reach out. Don't be shy. We love it. My favorite thing to do every day is talk to students. So um, go ahead and reach out. And um, we certainly hope that um, we will be seeing you at Tulane soon. Yeah, thank you very much. And if anybody has questions, please, please feel free to reach out. I'll respond as quickly as possible. Thank you, everyone.